Hello and welcome to your Introduction to Inequalities video. We're going to start off by looking at the definition of an inequality. We've recently been studying equations and how to solve equations, and all of our equations have had an equal sign in them. An inequality is different because it is a mathematical sentence that uses symbols such as greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or not equal to. And we'll talk more about those symbols in a little bit. Let's look at an example of an inequality statement. This statement, if you read it, is x is less than 5. So if we think about a number line, and I want to think about numbers that are less than 5, it could be 4, 3, 2, 1, or it could be any number in between. So the way that we graph this is we put an open circle at 5, because if the number has to be less than 5, it can't equal 5. And then we want to shade the numbers to the left, because that represents all the possible numbers that are smaller than 5. So there are, unlike an equation, there are an infinite number of answers to this inequality. So some possible examples of numbers in the solution set could be 4, or possibly 1. It could include decimals, like 3.5. It could include negative numbers. It could also include zero. So there are lots and lots of possibilities. The one thing that I would like you to note, however, is that five itself is not in the solution set. Because the number can't be less than five, if it is equal to 5. So that's a little example of how inequalities work. The notation is what you're going to have to get used to. So I've put together this little table for you. You can see the symbols up above. So we have the equal sign, and it's important to note that that's not part of an inequality, but I wanted to point out that it is what we were working on. And we've also been talking about vocabulary and math. Notice that all of these symbols have the word is. That's what you want to be looking for when you're translating, because if you just saw something like less than or more than, it could mean subtraction or addition. But as soon as you start to see that is vocabulary, that tells you that you're either building an equation or an inequality. So please refer back to this chart as you're looking towards some of your examples. We are going to do just that. We're going to look at some of these sentences, and we are going to translate them into mathematical inequalities. So our first one, children under age six ride free. So let's let C represent children. And if you are going to ride free, you have to be under age six. So an appropriate symbol to describe this situation would be less than. So C is less than six. Number two is slightly different. Children ride free through age six. So now if you are six, you can still ride free. So our inequality looks very similar, only now we're going to use the less than or equal to. So that means our number can either be six or it can be a number smaller than six. Number three, you must be older than 12 to drive a go-kart. We can use Y for you and older than would imply greater than. So in order to drive the go-kart, you'd have to be 13 or 14 or 15. Number four is a little different twist on that. You must be at least 12. And there's some vocabulary that you may want to refer back to our chart. Here we have at least. And so we know that we have to have that greater than or equal to symbol. So this means you could be 12 but that is the smallest number that you could be. You could still be older than 12, but you can't be younger. Number five, a little bit more mathematical example here. It says X is non-negative. So what that means is X could be a positive number, but it also means that X could be zero. So we're gonna use the greater than or equal to symbol here indicating that x could be 0, it could be positive, but it can't be anything that is negative. 
And then our last one, three quarters, is not the same value as four dimes. So if we use variables for this, we could say three quarters is not the same value. So I think this wording calls for the not equal to symbol and 4D for four dimes. So you're going to get some practice later on where you're translating expressions. And so you want to just think about the scenario and then refer back to your chart if you get stuck and look for this vocabulary to help you determine which symbol to use. All right, now let's talk about graphing. When you are writing expressions that you intend to graph on a number line, the order that you write your expression in is very important. I want this variable to be first all the time. So we'll just use x for example. And then our inequality symbol could use less than. And then we need our constant for 2. I'm just picking 2. It could be any number. But that would be an example. x is less than 2. So if we look at this sentence that we have here, 6 is greater than b. So here's that is notation again, is greater than b. If we just translate this, we would write 6 is greater than b. But what we notice is that doesn't follow the order that I just talked about, where the variable is always first. So what I would like you to do is actually read that inequality backward. And when you read it backward, I'm just going to move this number line out of the way here, we're not flipping the inequality symbol, we're not changing its meaning, but if, it, if 6 is greater than b, then b is less than 6. If you just read it backwards, you're interpreting it the exact same way, you're just writing it different. And now because the variable is first, we can graph it accurately. So here it tells me that b is kind of starting at 6, but it can't be equal to 6 because it says b is just less than 6. So we're going to shade numbers that are smaller than 6. So just like we talked about earlier, um, numbers that could be in the solution set could be 5, could be 4, 3, 2, 1, could be negative numbers, could be 0, could be a negative fraction, could be a positive fraction, could be a big negative number, anything that's to the left of that number line. So just because the numbers that we see stop at 1 doesn't mean that it doesn't continue. As you know, lines go on forever. All right, let's talk a little bit more about graphing. So I'm not sure if you picked up on it, but I was using an open circle. Um, we're going to look at a couple other possibilities here. So when we graph inequalities, we're going to use a closed symbol if we have either greater than or equal to or less than or equal to symbols. So what this means is that the endpoint is included in the solution. And we'll look at some examples of this in a little while. The open circle is the one that I was using previously in the two examples that we've looked at in our notes. And that's going to be just for greater than or less than. So notice it's missing that little equal bar underneath. And what that implies is that the end point is not included in the solution. And just because these two sentences here look very similar, let's underline the not in the second one. As far as shading, a lot of times you're just going to use your common sense. But you can shade to the left when you have less than. And that includes less than or less than or equal to. Likewise, if you're shading to the right, it's going to use that greater than notation. Now, an important note, you can only use this rule, the shading left or shading right, uh, if the variable is written first. So that goes back to our order matters. 
So in our note here, we'll just say the variable must be first. And then our solution set is going to be any number in that shaded region. So we've already introduced that a little bit and talked about that, but this will be our formal definition. So let's go ahead and just look at a few more examples of graphing. So this first one, x is less than negative 3. We have the less than notation, so it's going to be an open circle at negative 3. And then because the variable's first, we can use the trick of shading to the left or to the right. And so for this graph, we're going to shade to the left. But don't get too bogged down in your rules. Just think about it. If you want numbers that are less than negative 3, they have to be smaller. So when you're in the negatives, the larger the negative number, the smaller its value. So just think about it if you are forgetting your right or your left. Number two, we have y is greater than 5. So we again are going to go with that open circle. The endpoint will not be included. And then because it's greater than, we are going to shade to the right. So I put an open circle at 5, and we don't have too much of our number line left, but we can still shade. It's going to go off in that direction. So any number that happens to be bigger than 5 is going to be part of our solution. Number 3, a is less than or equal to 0. This is going to be a closed circle because a can be either a number that's smaller than 0, that's what the less than symbol means, or the equal bar underneath it means it could also be 0. So when I say the endpoint is included, that means 0 is the endpoint. It is part of our solution. And then we're going to shade to the left because we know what our variable is first, and we have the less than notation. So it's obviously my shading is showing up really nicely on the smart board. If you have a highlighter, and maybe I should have mentioned this earlier, um, highlighters work really well to shade your number lines. So our last one here, b is greater than or equal to 2. We are going to have a closed interval. And because it is greater than, we want numbers that are bigger. So we're going to be looking to the right on the number line. So we shade our endpoint. 2 is part of our solution. And then every number that is bigger than 2 is also part of the solution. Our last two examples, number 5 and number 6, we have to be a little bit careful. If you go back to our order matters, these two examples are in violation of that rule. So what we want to do is read backward. We are not flipping or changing the value or anything like that. We're just simply reading it backward. So the proper way to read this would be m is greater than 1. And that should make sense. If 1 is less than m, then m has to be bigger than 1. So we again notice that we just have the greater than symbol. So this is going to be open, which means 1 is not included in our solution set. And then we want numbers that are bigger than 1, so anything to the right of 1 on the number line. Hopefully this is making sense to you. Number six, we also have to read backwards because our variable falls on the right-hand side. So if you just read it from right to left, it says n is less than or equal to negative 2. So we have that closed circle, which means our endpoint is included. And then we want numbers less than negative 2, so smaller, which on the number line means to the left and we just shade that side. So again, just be really careful about that order. Always have the variable first. All right, now we're going to work backwards, and you're going to be given the graph, and you want to come up with the inequality that would represent the graph. You can pick whatever letter you want, but we as algebra teachers tend to always fall back on x, so I'm going to go ahead and use x. I'm going to follow the rule that order matters, so I'm going to put my variable first, and then might be a little hard to see. Hopefully it shows up a little bit better in your notes, but we can see that our number line is shaded to the left. So the solution is representing all of these numbers that are going to be smaller than 2. I noticed that 2 
is a closed circle. And I notice that I'm shading to the left, which means I'm going to have less than or equal to 2. So that is the inequality that matches up with that graph. If we want to think about numbers in this solution set again, 2 is included because of that closed circle. 1.5 is included. 1.25. 1.1. Anything that's negative would be included. 0 would be included. So those are all examples of numbers in the solution set. Looking at number 8, we notice our endpoint here is not filled in. So we have that open circle. And then we notice that we are shading to the right. So we want numbers that are bigger. So we start with our variable. I'm looking at numbers that are greater than, not equal to, because we have that open circle. And then our endpoint is negative 4. So x is greater than negative 4. Note that negative 4 is not part of our solution here. Negative 3 could be negative 2.5, negative 1, 0, 500, anything that's positive would fall in that solution set because obviously that line continues forever. So it's not just the numbers that we see that are labeled, it's every number in between and every number to the right. Okay, this concludes your introduction to inequalities video. You can now continue on in your packet.